Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation and I'm really excited to do this video for you because I'm going to give you my top favorite aspects in astrology and they're pretty easy aspects to follow. So if you've got your gorgeous natal chart or if you have your chart completely memorized, that's good. Bring it with you to this video so you can see if you've got some of these juicy, gorgeous, beautiful aspects in your own chart. Now I have to say this with a caveat. I probably have 500 favorite aspects because there are about 40,000, right? But I'm just giving you my very few favorites, but there are plenty more than this. So if you guys feel confused, if you guys feel like, wait a minute, I thought, you know, Mercury conjunct Neptune was a good aspect. What do you think about that, Meredith? feel free to write your question in the notes and I will let you know. Now, one thing that you're going to see that's pretty consistent with my choices is I don't pick a whole lot of conjunctions. I don't pick oppositions and I don't normally pick squares, but not all squares and not all conjunctions and not all oppositions, they're not all bad. Some are really, really good. I don't usually choose them over a trine or a sextile. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Conjunctions and, and oppositions and squares are not always bad. I'm just going with my juiciest fruit, my favorite of the favorites, okay? And these are my choices. So, you know, another astrologer might like something better than I do, but I thought I would share these with you. And I think you're going to love learning about these aspects. I think you're going to fall in love with learning the deeper part of astrology, not just, oh, I'm a Taurus with Leo rising. It's so much bigger than that. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you already know that. You already know that we don't really do sun sign astrology. That's like saying I've got blonde hair. That's like saying I'm foot nine, which I am. You know, it's just a descriptor. It's not as deep as the aspects are. Aspects, when you start learning about aspects, that is when you really, really peel the astrological, psychological, soulful onion. Yeah. So this is not in order, okay? This is just kind of off the top of my head and what's in my heart and what I've learned about astrology for over 23 years. So if you don't know me, my name is Meredith. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. I do tropical astrology. I use Placidus. If you don't know what your signs are, if you don't know what your chart is, you can go buy one in my store at soulnavigation.com. Just click on shop, the shop tab, and it will take you there. And I make gorgeous natal charts because I want you guys to learn. That's me. <laughs> now let's talk about you. If you've got Venus, trine or sextile, the moon, this is one of my favorite aspects because this is pure love and charm. And this is a person who just understands the artfulness of love. This is somebody who understands um, how to make others feel good instinctively. From the day these people are born, they are concerned and worried about if other people feel comfortable around them, if they make other people feel loved and nurtured and happy. They also are kind of the master of the feminine arts. They are born the muse. Now, if you're a man and you have this, you ooze charm. Women love you. You probably dress nice, smell good. You might be impeccable around manscaping. This is a Casanova in a way, but not not in a not in a sick way. They, they can't help it. They just ooze charm. They also kind of have a good luck vibration about them. This is very sexy in an unassuming way. This is not braggadocious because the moon kind of keeps that Venus deeper. So it's not just a pretty face. It's a pretty face with a deep love attached to it. Love this aspect. Do you have this aspect? And if you do, Venus trine or sextile the moon in what signs do you have this aspect in because that matters too and also what house do you have this in because that matters too that's gonna the house is gonna tell you if it's extroverted or introverted number two this aspect would be mercury conjunct 
the sun. Now this is one of my only conjunctions. I love the trine and I love the sextile as well, but I do like it conjunct. However, I don't like it combust, so it can't be too close. Remember in my video prior to this, uh, part three, I was like, Mercury combust the sun is just so myopic. So it needs to sit a little further away, like six degrees or further away, but I wouldn't go past 11. So if you've got Mercury conjunct the sun between six degrees and 11 degrees away, I like that. I like exact trines and exact sextiles. So anything with an orb between zero and 10 for the sextile and for the trine. And the reason why I like this is this is such a smarty pants person. This is somebody who is just so stinking smart. I just get really excited about people who bring a big fat giant brain to the table. I just just, it is just such an aphrodisiac. This is a person who's really brilliant, who values the intellect, who values the mind, who values thinking. This is somebody who's kind of amped up and ramped up. This person also adds kind of a logic to life. And I love that. I kind of need that. I'm a very emotional and passionate person. Can you tell? And this is a person who brings like great reasoning and great intellect and they're astute and they're going to research. They're going to want to listen to science and data and proof. <laughs> so I like this. Number three, and I think you guys might know this, especially if you are a Taurus, because I talk about this a lot. I have two favorite moon signs and Taurus is, it's kind of tied for first place. I can't decide. I'll tell you my second favorite moon sign in a minute, but I love a Taurus moon. I love, 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 love a Taurus moon. This little guy is my Taurus moon. Look at him. He's so cute. Teddy, there's the Taurus moon. Come here. Here he comes. Oh, he had to get his ball. Say hi. That's the one thing about Taurus moon. They do it their way. <laughs> oh, there's his little face. Whoa. Wah, wah, wah. Of course he has his ball because he's a Taurus moon. Taurus moons need feel goods. They need feel goods and they know how to make you feel good. They nurture you. They take care of all your creature comforts. They work with all the sen senses. So if you're loved by a Taurus moon person, oh my God, if you are a Taurus or you're involved with the Taurus, go watch my Taurus video because I talk a lot about, you know, what is so incredible about a Taurus moon. These people have a kindness, a tenderness, a sweetness. These people do have a little bit of a stubbornness, but when you go to their house, they're going to give you a warm blanket and a, a chamomile tea. They're going to give you their best smelling sheets. They know the difference between 500 thread count and 700 thread count, right? Like that's a friend. <laughs> <laughs> they'll draw you a warm bath. They'll have a bath set up for you with like the bath salts, bath bombs. I mean, oh, they just want you to feel good. And that's what this little guy does for me. He's so stinking cute. <laughs> Number four, Mars in Scorpio. If you are blessed to have a partner with Mars in Scorpio, I'm going to tell you that the passion is pretty much going to stay alive forever. Mars and Scorpios usually don't shut down sexually. They don't shut down their drive. They don't shut down their ambition and their passion. They have a very activated Mars and they're very patient with other people. They have a patience that Mars and Aries just doesn't have. They're sensual and sexual and intuitive. If you're a man with Mars and Scorpio, you just know how how to make women melt. And if you're a woman with Mars in Scorpio, it's almost like you're just beguiling and enchanting and magnetic. This is a person who's got big goals. This is a person who has big drive, big ambition, big energy, but it all operates stealth. <laughs> it's kind of covert. It doesn't show its cards. It doesn't impose upon you. At least you don't know it does. <laughs> they don't show you. It probably does. You just don't know that they know that they're imposing on you secretively and covertly, but they are. The other thing I love about Mars and Scorpio for either a man or a woman is this high level of gut instinct and intuition and like psychic sensibility. They're the manifester. They're the magician in the, um, in the tarot deck. And so they can just create a lure 
and they can push things away and bring things to them at their will. And if, if they're really a master of their energy and if they've got this in a great aspect to other planets in their chart, they're masterful with their energy. They are the magician with their energy. Because I was saying Mars and Scorpio, and by the way, that's the master seducer. And it's not just sexual seducer, it's the master seducer of getting anything I want. I don't have this aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Obvi, Obvi, obviously I don't. Number five is if you have Venus in Libra. I love this because this person has a natural grace, a natural beauty. Um, they understand good boundaries. You know, they're not crass, they're not coarse, they're probably not going to be ugly to you. They're not even going to be ugly, but they're not going to be ugly to you. They are sort of careful with you and they're conscientious. There's a sweetness, there's a kindness, there's a diplomacy, there's an artfulness, there's an elegance. There's These people probably have fashion and style and love the arts and have beautiful art and smell good, look good, are good. <laughs> and there's a loveliness. They want you to be comfortable above all else. They care more about other people than they do themselves. And I'm sorry, I like to benefit from that. <laughs> I mean, that's just nice for me once in a while to be around people who are like, oh, well, what about your comfortable feelings, Meredith? What would make you feel so good? I mean, yeah, that would be like such a freaking treat. <laughs> Meredith, what do you most want? <laughs> I need to find myself a Venus and Libra. <laughs> yeah, are you a Venus and Libra? Will you be my friend? Can you guys relate to this so far? Leave me a comment below. I want to know. Also, I have to say something. I'm going to do a couple new really, really cool things things. So if you're not a super supporter, I hope you'll become one, but I'm doing, I'm doing three new things for my super supporters. One, you get a discount on all team readings at Soul Navigation. So I want you to go over to my uh, soulnavigation.com, pick your reader and go choose the super supporter special on my team's pages. They are amazing. The second thing I'm doing is I am doing a giveaway. So stay tuned on the first of every month over at Instagram. If you are a super supporter, your name goes into a hat and you get to win a prize, a free reading, a free report, a free natal chart, something. The next thing I'm doing, you guys, I'm so excited. Excited. I am so excited. And you let me know in the notes section if you're a super supporter and if you want me to use your chart as an example for my secret members only videos, that's going to be my next series. So I'm going to pull the super supporter name out of the hat and I'm going to do a reading on your chart if you're a super supporter for my members only. Not everybody wants to be exposed, but if you do, let me know and I will put your name in the hat and I will use your chart as the example for everybody to learn with. And um, it's like getting a free reading. So those are my three new perks for super supporters along with everything else. Um, and I love you and I love you all. And I'm so grateful that you're here with me learning astrology. Okay. Number six, this is my other favorite moon sign. I love this moon. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, I talk about it a lot in my videos. So you guys probably can already guess. Can you guess? I'll give you just a minute. Dun, 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 dun. Guess what my second favorite moon sign is? Leo! Yes. Oh, who doesn't love a Leo moon? This is the most generous, giving, charismatic, fun, bubbly Santa Claus moon person. This is Santa Claus incarnate. Even if you're a Scorpio and you have a Leo moon, you are going to be the nicest person. You're going to come bearing gifts. You, These people go out of their way to create happiness and joy and playfulness and childlike fun and jubilance and opulence and happiness. And they love nice things. They love the best things. They're not going to pick you up in some, you know, shabby ride. They're going to really care about the impression that they make on you. And they want to just drip you in their love. And so this is like a thrilling, exciting moon. So do you have a moon in Leo and do you feel this way about yourself? Let me know. I want to know if you can relate. And if you're so blessed to have a Leo moon person in your life, like God bless you. <laughs> Jackpot. Cha-ching. Okay, let's do the next one. Number seven. This will be Neptune trine or sextile the moon. This is somebody who loves to dance and sing and act. This is somebody who has a very deep spiritual intuition. This is with Neptune trine or sextile. I don't love the conjunction here. I like the trine or sextile 
tighter the better, the tighter the orb the better, so the closer they are to the same degree the better, but I'd give it within 10 degrees. All these aspects will be within 10 degrees, but the tighter the better, okay? So if your Neptune is at 15 degrees Sag and your Moon is at 15 degrees Libra, that's a sextile. If your Neptune is at 15 degrees Sag and if your moon is say in Aries or Leo, that's a trine. You guys already know these aspects, right? If not, you gotta go watch the video where I talk to you about the compatibility between signs. And um, it's a deep video and I hope you guys are learning. I hope you guys are watching more than just this video because by now you could be getting a master's degree in astrology with all these videos that I've done. So I really hope that you know that fire signs like fire signs, water signs like, like I've already done all those videos. So please go find them. But Neptune, trining or sextiling the moon is this divine love. So the moon is love and Neptune is divine love. And so this is somebody who is very peaceful, very calm, very tranquil. This is somebody who just brings tranquility to the party. My mom has this aspect and I will tell you, what does she make better in the world? You ready for it? She's got this almost exact. She makes, let me tell you what she makes better in the world. Every single thing. And I, I'm not the only person that will tell you that, anybody who knows her. She makes literally everything better, everything she touches. She brings tranquility, grace. She brings uh, power of positivity. She brings magic to the table. She's not the only one that I know with this aspect. This is just such a gorgeous aspect. So this is somebody who is also probably very deeply into the arts. They love the arts or they are in the arts. Like when you go to my mom's house for my whole life, you will hear pretty much one thing in the background and that is Mozart. <laughs> I mean, she just has Mozart flowing through her house and she likes it that way. Then you go out to the living room and you'll hear the cowboy movies that my dad is watching. <laughs> But she's got Mozart pumping in, the pipes are pumping in to her office and she is just calming and beautiful. And this, this person is usually very, very, very pretty and very beautiful because they have a sense of refinement and they're easy to love and they make love easy. They make love easy. Do you have this? I want to know you if you have this. Okay, while we're on the moon, I'm going to say moon trining or sextiling the sun the tighter the better. The tighter the orb, the better. So again, if you have that 15 degree sun sign and you have a 14 degree moon sign or a 16 degree moon sign, that's pretty darn tight. And if you have it exact, that's bingo was his name-o. <laughs> Somebody told me that I reminded them of a 1950s person. I'm not, I wasn't born in the 50s, but I thought that was funny. They're like, you have all these 1950s isms. And I'm like, it's probably because my parents. I don't love the conjunction. It's a little much. It's just a little bit too amplified. But when it's in sextile or trine, this is a person whose soul and heart are synchronized. This is a person who likes themselves. This is a person who likes their parents, grew up with a solid sense of self with a solid sense of sun, dad, and moon, mom. And that creates a solid sense of me. And so the soul and the moon are in alignment. So when my moon is happy, my soul is happy. My sun is happy. Uh, and the moon is the heart. So my heart and my soul want the same thing and they know how to be supportive partners to the other. So the moon can go out and bring back to the sun what it wants. And the sun can go out and be what the moon needs. And the sun and the moon, this is like probably the number one best aspect you could have in a chart because it makes everything else a little bit more doable. It makes you a little more likable, a little bit more in harmony with your emotions. Your ego never gets too far away with a good sun moon. I want to give you a bonus with this. If you have a sun moon ascendant sextile trine and I might add the conjunction, that's a maybe it's still very, very good. So for example, if you had the sun on the ascendant and then that was in trine or sextile to the moon, I'd give it to you. If you've got the moon on the ascendant and it's in trine or sextile to the sun, I'd give it to you. It's a lot when you put your moon on the ascendant. It's a lot when you put the sun on the ascendant too, but it's still very good. But my favorite is if you've got an ascendant, a moon, and a sun, that are all sextile or trine to one another. So let's say you're a Scorpio with Capricorn rising and a Pisces moon or a Virgo moon. I love that 
because it's all sextiles and trines. Are you with me? Ding, 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 ding. That's like pinball. That's like the pinball wizard. <laughs> That's like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, you win the 5,000 extra points, right, on the pinball machine. Yeah. So that's the pinball wizard. And that is like gloriously yummy. Like if you have that, let me know and let me know how tight it is. It's got to be pretty tight and it can be within 10 degrees. Okay. All three have to be within 10 degrees. But you could have just one sextile that works and one trine that works, and maybe you don't get the full triangle. Still good, but my juiciest fruit, the pinball wizard, is if you've got the whole thing in tight aspect and that giant triangle. That just makes life so much easier to manage. It makes all the hard stuff easy to manage. Doors will open up because the ascendant is in harmony. How you approach life, how people approach you, how you see the world, how the world sees you, how you dress, how you manifest your physicality is in perfect alignment with both your heart and your soul. And so it just creates ease and harmony. Okay, let's keep moving. Number nine, if Mars is trying our sextile to Jupiter, this makes an incredible athlete. This makes somebody who has giant goals. This makes somebody who is very ambitious. This can create like the Guinness World Book of Records type of person. This is somebody who has gargantuan optimism and abundance. These people like win the lottery. These people find their way to the top. These people don't seem to ever lose. And I don't really like the conjunction, although I'll take it. It's a good one. Um, I'd give it a B plus, but this is A plus. If you've got Mars trine or sextile Jupiter, is this you? And if you guys need help understanding this, you got to go buy my starter package. If you already have that, go get the advanced astro package, the advanced astro gold package that I sell on my shop tab at soulnavigation.com. Spoil yourself or get a reading with one of my readers on team Soul Navigation. You can find them all on my website site at soulnavigation.com. They are amazing. You can also book with me. Um, I'm booked a little bit further out, but you can get on my free wait list. I put a waiting list together. If you want to get on my wait list, you can, or you can book with somebody at Team Soul Navigation and we can go into all your aspects and help you peel your onion. So you can go into deep exploration about who were you born to be? And we can do predictive astrology. What's coming up? What's the best timing? If you're getting married, you do not want to pick a random date. Let me just tell you, you've got to work with an astrologer to pick a date that works with both you and your partner in synchronizing up for the very best day because you guys are going to take your natal chart, their natal chart, combine them, and your relationship is gonna have a whole new birth to it. And that birth chart for your relationship is the moment you take your vows. So please don't get married without consulting an astrologer. You wanna have good Mars-Jupiter aspects on the day that you get married. Trust me, you do. You will have a great, intimate, romantic, sexual love life for the rest of your life. This is a very large sexual appetite. This, is, this has a lot of abundance in it. And you wanna stay attracted. You wanna stay gargantuanly attracted and hungry for your partner. And so you need a good Mars-Jupiter inside Sinistry. By the way, I want you guys to think about all these aspects inside, inside your chart, your natal chart, inside your sinistry chart, your chart and your partner's chart. So do your partner and you have moon trine or sextile the sun or sextile or trine the ascendant? Do you and your partner have Mars trine Jupiter, right? So you can look at it through sinistry, you can look at it natally, and you can also look at it by transit. So is Jupiter set making a sextile or a trine to your Mars today? That's your lucky day. That's when you want to go buy that lottery ticket. That's when you want to try out for the New York Giants, right? That's when you want to have your job interview. That's what astrology can do for you. And that's what a good astrologer, anybody on Team Soul Navigation, can do predictive astrology with you to see your upcoming transits. So let's keep talking. Number 10. This one's easy. This is Venus sextile or trine Mars. Oh my God. This is ambition, Mars, and money, Venus coming together in harmony. This is love and sex coming together in harmony and ease. This is drive and the art of finesse and negotiation coming together. This is your physical talent and your financial abundance, right? This is your self-worth and your physicality, how strong you are and how strong you are. So this is about your character and then the will of your body right? A good Venus Mars is what will keep you going when you're fighting the flu, 
This is what will keep you going because it's about your character and your strength, right? The strength of your character, your self-esteem, your will, your will to live physically, and your will around your self-worth. So having a great Venus Mars by sextile or trine is fantastic. And do you have this in synastry with your partner? And do you have this by transit? So think about all of this. I think we're on number 11. This would be Libra rising. I think Libra risings have such a gracious way about themselves. There is grace, natural grace. There is this loveliness to their personality. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. These are people who are not going to be steamrollers. These are great listeners. These people have mastered the art of communication, negotiation, compromise. They are the true diplomats. They are kind, brilliant negotiators. They're usually very smart and beautiful. They're interesting to listen to. They care about other people. They put other people first. So I love myself a good Libra rising. Are you Libra rising? Do you know? I hope you know your rising sign. You can only know your rising sign by knowing your birth time. Okay, number 12, Jupiter, trine, or sextile, the ascendant and or the sun and or the moon. <laughs> oh my God. God, this is so positive and I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like putting just the golden crown on your head. This is truly a regal placement. This is a king queen placement. I mean, really, you are bo born with such regality and such e enormous opulence, abundance, happiness, joy, optimism. You probably see the glass half full all the time. This is a fun person, a funny person, a happy person. If you've got other more painful transits in your chart, it's not a bad thing because this could be too much of a good thing. But tell me where your Jupiter is. This is very lucky. This is very happy. This is very exciting and adventurous and broad-minded and a visionary and somebody who sees the big picture and somebody who's in love with life and their life and themselves. Maybe it might be too obnoxious, but it could be just right if it's in an earth sign, in an air sign that's really lovely lovely. Water and fire is, a, fire is a little bit more arrogant and water is a little bit more emotional. So I kind of like this aspect, that Jupiter trine in earth because it's just so grounded and in air. So my last aspect for you today, although I could probably do five of these videos, but I'm not going to. I'm going to probably end the series with this one, but I want you to ask me your aspect questions and I try my hardest to answer them. I mean, it's like a full-time job answering comments. So sometimes I just cherry pick my very best questions. You know, put your aspect in and degrees and sign too. That's really, really helpful in the comments. And if other people have an opinion, I invite you to also add it, you know, so we can all learn. I want to build a community, an astrology community here where we just have an openness to share and where you can really learn a lot. And if you want to learn a lot more, come join my super supporter program you could be a big winner and you can get so many great perks. I'm going to do another video on everything that you'll get. But my last great aspect that I wanted to talk about today is Venus sextiling or trining Neptune. This is such deep love. This is the sign of an earth angel. This is love that runs the gamut. These people are so spiritually and divinely inclined. They probably have a direct channel to God or the spirit guides or the heavens above or their crossed over ancestors or the ancestral nation, you know, mother earth. These people are so in touch with God. They probably experience like heaven on earth. These are the earth angels. These are the people in the world that have kind of shed their ego a little bit. They're, they're not as ego based as some of the other signs and aspects. This is very without ego. And I'd love to know if you have this aspect and in what sign and in what house. And if you have this in the 12th house, one of those planets in the 12th house or the fourth house, this is just heavenly. I mean, I just wonder, what do you do with yourself? Like, uh, I can't even imagine how deep and poignant and spiritual and beautiful. This is so poetic. If you've got one of these planets in the ninth house, it's poetic justice. If you've got one of these in the seventh house, it's the art of relationships. The fourth house, it's probably the art and the love of food. 
of home life. You're probably world's greatest mother, even if you don't have children or world's greatest father, like love, family love comes so easily for you. So this is really a fascinating aspect. Okay, those are my very favorite off the top of my head aspects really. Uh, transits too, of course, and you can look at your progress chart too. Do you guys all have your progress chart? Well, that's what you get in my advanced astro gold package. You get your progress chart and you get all, you get two giant reports. One is all your progressions. You guys have to know your progressions and you might not have been born with this aspect, but you might have it by progression. And so you might've had a change in yourself. Like, wow, I don't even recognize myself anymore. I was so insecure when I was young and now I'm so confident or I was so introverted and now I'm so extroverted. Well, well, that's your progressions. That's how you have progressed. That's how your soul is progressing. And you only get two or three different progressions uh, by sun sign in a lifetime. And it is just riveting. So you can learn all about that in my advanced astral gold package, which is like my new favorite package. I love it, love it, love it beyond. And I love my lover's package too. The solar return report is amazing. And you could have this in your, um, you could have some of these aspects in your solar return. And so it's just fascinating to go way beyond the natal chart. You guys got to go beyond the natal chart to understand astrology and how it's working in your life. And I cannot wait to see you in my next live chat. We're going to do a whole bunch of more fun stuff here on my channel. And I love having you be a part of it. Please subscribe. Please share my videos with anybody and um, get a reading with Team Soul Navigation. I'm so grateful for all your love and support for my business, my small business here at Soul Navigation. And from my home here in Seattle, my garden isn't going to last much longer. It's going to get cold. But from Seattle to wherever you're at in the world, I'm so touched and I feel so blessed to get to be here with you. Take good care. Bye.